Hello and welcome to another Explorer video. Today we're taking a look at a Black, Green or Golgari food combo deck. I've also seen Jund versions splashing red for cards like Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Mayhem Devil, but today we're just trying out a Black, Green version that's focused on the infinite combo of Igra with Cauldron Familiar. This new card from Bloomborrow is a 5 mana 6-6 six, six, legendary elemental cat with a ward making the opponent sacrifice a food if they want to target Igra. Conveniently, we will be giving the opponent lots of food by turning all other creatures into food artifacts in addition to their other types, so now all those creatures can be sacrificed for 2 mana to gain 3 life, and whenever any food is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we get to put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on Igra, so that also includes any other creature dying, since all those creatures are now also considered food. So making a very large Igra could be a solid win condition in some matchups, but we're actually trying to set up an infinite combo that doesn't require us to attack with Igra to win the game, and that simply involves two copies of Cauldron Familiar. This 1-1 one, one will drain the opponent for one whenever it enters, and we can sacrifice a food to return Cauldron Familiar from our graveyard to the battlefield. So now all we need is a Cauldron Familiar in play and one in the graveyard. We sacrifice the Familiar in play to the ability of the one in the graveyard, graveyard, since it's now also considered a food, so it can now be sacrificed to the familiar's ability, then essentially we'll trade places, we trigger the familiar's enter the battlefield effect, draining the opponent for one, rinse and repeat, and now we get to infinitely drain the opponent, gain infinite life, and also add infinite plus one counters to Igra. So that's the three card combo we're trying to assemble, and when most of the cards can be in the graveyard to combo off, it's not that difficult, since we can just kind of mill ourselves to try and find these combo pieces, and if we have a scavenger's talent in play, milling Igra can also be a way to access it. This starts out as a one man enchantment, saying whenever one or more creatures we control die, create a food token. This only triggers once each turn. Then on level two, for two additional mana, whenever we sacrifice any permanent, target player mills two cards. Now a permanent could be a treasure token, a food token, or a creature, so there's a lot of ways we can trigger Scavenger's Talent, and this is not limited to once per turn, so we can trigger it multiple times. Initially we're gonna be milling ourselves, that way we can potentially mill Cauldron Familiar and Igra, and then if we mill Igra on level 3, at the beginning of our end step we may sacrifice three other non-land permanents if we do return a creature from our graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. So that's one way we can get back Igra if we milled it, and then essentially cheaply get it on the battlefield, if we already have our two Cauldron Familiars ready to go, we can immediately combo off and win the game on the spot. So that's the power of Scavenger's Talent in this build. And then rounding out the deck, we've got some more ways to fill the graveyard. Stitcher Supplier mills three when it enters and dies. Can also sacrifice it to our Witch's Oven, which is of course tailor-made for a Cauldron Familiar to keep bringing it back and making food tokens to replace it. And then we also have Sator Wayfinder, which can mill four cards when it enters. And then it's also still a creature we can maybe sacrifice to our various effects, such as our Deadly Dispute as well, which can draw two cards and make a treasure token. Another permanent we can easily sacrifice to enable the level two on Scavenger's Talent to mill two additional cards. And then a Gilded Goose is also perfect here, as it can sacrifice food to make mana. And then we can maybe ramp out Igra ahead of schedule. And then sacrificing food can also be a way to enable some of our synergies, such as the Trail of Crumbs, paying one mana to find a permanent among the top two to put in our hand. So that's another way to keep digging towards some of our combo pieces. And then finally, four copies of Fatal Push to give us some creature interaction, and we can easily enable a revolt in this deck as well. And then the mana base is very streamlined, lots of black-green dual lands, some basics, the channel lands offer a bit of extra utility as well, and then two copies of Fountain Port can also be nice to make various treasure tokens or fish tokens, can also maybe sacrifice a food token to it to draw a card and still enable cards like Trail of Crumbs paying the one, so that can also draw us a few additional cards. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not ideal. Double Supplier can see quite a few cards in our graveyard to find familiar, but no ramp to get Igra in play. Feels a bit clunky. This is much better. So, and what do we get rid of is the question. Could get rid of one land. Since we have Gilded Goose, Wayfinder to find a third land. That seems reasonable. And then if we mill another familiar, we could assemble the combo around turn 4 already. Although facing red aggro, so our opponents can be pretty quick out of the gate. 
probably still want to play Gilded Goose first. And then next turn, go with the Wayfinder. Opponent attacks. Don't really want to block and lose the Goose. Is your opponent getting in for two? Maybe as a spectacle card, a light of the stage. So could have maybe gotten away with blocking. All right, found another Goose. And uh, I think going for Wayfinder is still reasonable here. And uh, that's a swing and a miss. Mainly looking for another Cauldron Familiar in the graveyard. Currently could play another Goose, so we at least are more likely to untap with one of them. But that still doesn't let me play Igra next turn, so... Yeah, we'll just pass. Finding a Deadly Dispute would be decent. Of course, another Witch's Oven to go with the Cauldron Familiar would be great but mostly just another familiar. So this time do we block? Opponent will be casting Wizard's Lightning. Probably upstairs if we block with Gilded Goose. So I'm okay trumping with the Wayfinder. Soak up a little bit of damage. So our opponent seems to be interested in taking out the Goose. That works. Another Wayfinder is not bad either. Ideally find a green source and then play Goose afterwards. Alright, and then Boseju is painless here. So that would let me play Agra next turn. And then either way we have a bit of life gain here to survive their burn spells. There's also a Den of the Bugbear we'll eventually need to worry about. But if we can land Igra, it's a pretty large blocker. So for now I'll still jump in case they can deal a burst amount of damage to take us out. But on lets damage happen. And puts Giganta in hand. So yeah, not the most impressive turn, and we found our Witch's Oven. Still down to just play Igra here. Although if we have Familiar plus Oven in play, we can immediately grow Igra. Plus we'll have a formidable blocker. So I think it's actually safer to play Familiar plus Oven here. Maybe should have played the Oven first. In case they have removal for Familiar. That exiles it like a Spikefield Hazard. Because yeah, if I tap out for Igra, it's my only blocker, or opponent can still maybe get past it with bump spells if they're running those. Now we get to pass with a food token to gain three, a familiar to chum block, and then hopefully next turn play Igra if the goose is still there. So familiar is more than happy to chump. They might still be able to give the Swift Spear Trample. They don't. And the Gigantha, so our opponent's hand must not be great. We get to return Familiar if we'd like. I think the safest is just to gain three here. And then untap. Play Igra. Can immediately bring back the familiar, sanking a token, a grow Igra, and then now we'll just pass. Got three blockers, a witch's oven at the ready, and just one more familiar to set up the infinite loop. Our opponent goes to attackers, sends in Gigantha. So if I block with Familiar, worst case is they would use some sort of Monstrous Rage to give Gigantha Trample, and maybe some other pump spells to finish this off. If I block with Igra, I can grow it at least up to a 10-10 by just sacking Familiar, and then I guess up to 12-12 by bringing it back. So I think it's safe enough to block with Igra. 
And then before damage, we probably want to sank the familiar. Right, opponent making a pair of one ones. And a wizard's lightning. Opponent's gonna have to sack a food first, which also grows Igra. And I'll still sank familiar here. So Igra 12 12 with 8 damage. I guess Soulscar Mage will remove counters here with the ability, so that's a little bit better. But yeah, still not good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Don't have any of our combo pieces, although we do get to mill quite a bit. And we have some interaction with Fatal Push. So I'm willing to give this a try. Facing Slide of Hands, it might be a Phoenix deck. Could be a tougher matchup, since we don't have a ton of flying blockers or interaction. Gilded Goose was a good draw, although I'm tempted to play Talent first, just so we at least get some food tokens out of our opponent killing our creatures. Just a tap land for them. So they could have a Spell Pierce, definitely a reason not to play Trail of Crumbs. Playing Wayfinder here seems quite reasonable. And then hoping to mill familiar. We did not hit a land. So not the best hit. I would have loved to draw a deadly dispute to sack our Stitcher supplier. Could always fatal push our own supplier to mill three more, but hopefully it doesn't come to that. Now a prankster. Opponent playing with Ral Crackling Wit as well. And yeah, they didn't find their third land, it seems. So we get to play Wayfinder to find a land potentially, or we can resolve our Trail of Crumbs, plus maybe a Gilded Goose. That seems reasonable. And then next turn we can try and hit an extra land drop with a Wayfinder. We can also start leveling up the talents. If our creatures die, we get to mill ourselves. And then at level 3, we can potentially reanimate Igra out of the graveyard. If we find one. Impulse takes out the goose. Makes another food token. So plenty of value to be had with a trail of crumbs as well. Would have been better with the goose, since that's an easier way to sacrifice her food. Now, probably stick to the plan. Play Wayfinder. Try and hit a land, and then we can... I'll level up the talent, I think. So now if we were to sack a food token, we can mill ourselves for two and pay the one for Trail of Crumbs. No Arc Light Phoenix in Graveyard, but this looks like a Treasure Cruise incoming to draw three. So that's pretty good. Sacking a food token also a way to enable Revolt on Fatal Push if we need to take out an Arclight Phoenix, for instance. And now into the Flood Maw to bounce our leveled up Scavenger's Talent. Fair enough. Prankster keeps milling, does not hit Phoenix, so that seems to be all for now. And a Witch's Oven, a decent sack outlet for Stitcher Supplier as well. So, yeah, let's replay Talents. Could play two, play Supplier and play Oven, although I really want to start leveling up so we can mill ourselves. I think that's the priority. And then I think I'm fine playing the Oven. And there's a Ledger Shredder, we can maybe Fatal Push. Lightning Axe, Wayfinder, discarding Arc Light Phoenix. Can sack it to the Oven, triggering our Scavenger's Talent. Mill for two.
And our opponent had another Phoenix to discard, so we're taking at least six here. That's going to add up quickly. So step one's going to be to probably push the Ledger Shredder. And then we want to keep digging to try and find Igra. Impulse the Wayfinder. Okay. So, step one, as we said, take out Ledger Shredder so your opponent doesn't get to connive. Then I could level up talent even more, but I think first probably play the Stitcher Supplier. Still no Cauldron Familiar or Igra. If I sacrifice Supplier to the Oven, we get to mill another five cards. So chances of hitting Igra or Familiar are pretty high. And then I can still level up the talent to maybe bring back Igra. I found a Familiar and Igra. Okay, so now if we can find another Familiar here, we could just win the game. End of turn, sacrifice three food to bring back Igra. Sadly can't pay for the Trail of Crumbs, but I can keep milling myself. Trying to find another familiar. Bring this one back. It is a little risky if we don't go infinite here and our opponent finds a way to exile it since I don't have the Witches Oven available. But I think I've got to try to just win right now. I right, didn't quite get there. So now the familiar is exposed. We are at 13. So not super likely to die right now at least. And then next turn we can untap with a Trail of Crumbs and keep digging for more familiars. They can also try to interact with Igra itself. Since they can easily get back Arclight Phoenix. But that will also grow Igra. So did our opponent account for the extra plus one counters? Double Lightning Axe would still do it, but Fiery Impulse is not quite enough. So that's eight damage on what will be a 12-12. So a triple phoenix could potentially return. And it looks like a treasure cruise here. Okay. If our opponent had something like Temporal Trespass to take an extra turn, we would have died. I don't think that card's on Arena yet. Sometimes a one-off in the Pioneer builds of Phoenix. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, we get to untap with Igra and Familiar, and we should be able to find a second Familiar to win the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We have a pretty weak hand. Supplier into Trail of Crumbs, a little bit of interaction with Fatal Push. This could work out fine if we don't draw too many more lanes and get to activate Trail of Crumbs to find some of our combo pieces. But uh, yeah, four lanes is maybe a bit much. All right, this is, I think, a little bit better. One Igra can go. And then Talent into maybe a Wayfinder on two. Our opponent to red-black. We're usually fine playing against more mid-range decks, since a game that drags out is one where we are more likely to assemble the combo. And we've got some nice card draw engines, like uh, Trail of Crumbs. Scavenger's Talent is good if the game goes long. For now, play Wayfinder. And we milled a familiar, so that's already quite good. Red-Black also unlikely to interact with our enchantments a whole lot. But of course Fable remains a powerful card. Fatal Push can deal with the token, and then I can still Deadly Dispute. Or we can try to turbocharge the Scavenger's Talent and try and level that up as quickly as possible. Don't think that's really necessary, since we already have Igra in hand. So I think pushing the Shaman... And then going for Deadly Dispute makes sense. Of 
Octopus Sage who also potentially an answer to the Fable, but don't really want to give the opponent an extra land this early in the game. And then we also have to watch out for Hive exiling the Familiar, so we want to be able to get it back. Right, shield Roots means we have to respond now. And then Shield Root happens. And another familiar, all right, perfect. So we have everything we need to combo off with Igra next turn. So hopefully they don't draw some hand disruption. So if they do, I guess our best course of action is leveling up the talents. So can level up once, play familiar, and that should be good enough for now. Could have also played Igra right now. But I think we prefer just playing it and being able to win on the spot. If they activate Hive, we can bring back Familiar before they exile it. And if they discard Igra, we just level up Talent and try and bring it back. Opponent pushes Familiar, that's fine. So if they tap out, that would be ideal, so we don't need to worry about instant speed interaction for the combo. And there we have it. So yeah, kind of as we suspected, I think mid-range is a fine matchup for this deck. So no need to bring anything back. Take our draw. Play Igra. And for one mana, they can't really stop us. We also get to mill the opponent out in addition to draining them with Cauldron Familiar triggers. And then I'm just gonna sack Familiar to Familiar. So even if they have a Fatal Push in hand, it's not really doing much. We do see a card like Shieldred's Edict can be effective if we just had Igrime play as our only creatures, so that kind of justifies our play of waiting a turn on Agra. And yeah, as we mentioned, Fatal Push just doesn't do anything. And our opponent scoops it up. Sweet. Get to a rank up here as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing green mana for Wayfinder and Trail of Crumbs. This one's borderline. Familiar is nice to have, Supplier to keep milling. If we do find green mana right away, the sand is fine. If we don't, then we're not doing a whole lot. So I'll take a mulligan, and this is a little bit better. One Igra can go. Supplier into Trail of Crumbs. Hope to find maybe a Gilded Goose to go with the Trail of Crumbs. Deadly Disputes would also be good with a Supplier. Put on green white. Fountain Port can also be pretty nice with the uh, food tokens from Trail of Crumbs, so we can maybe draw a card off Fountain Port and pay the one if we have four mana to essentially draw two cards. Opponent on a green white Angel Life Gain deck. So, the good news is they shouldn't have much interaction for our combo. The bad news is they're going to present a pretty fast clock. And uh, flying creatures we don't really interact with a whole lot. But uh, Scavenger's Talent is decent. So I think play Talent, level up. As opposed to Sack of Food, pay the one. At this point we just need to find Double Familiar. The best way to do so is by milling ourselves. 
So I'll level up the talents. And then I don't mind attacking with Supplier. I'm pretty happy if they block. Skyclave Apparition, sadly, a way the opponent can interact with our combo. Not every Angel deck necessarily plays it, but uh, yeah, pretty good here. Alright, found a Familiar, so we're getting very close. We have a food token in play. What we don't have is a good Sacrifice outlet. So maybe for now it's still use the Fountain Port trick on our food token to dig a few cards deeper. And then now Supplier wants to hang back to maybe Chum Block Apparition. Bono now with the Bishop. In older formats like Historic, you do have to worry about Soul Mender, which gains a life whenever a creature enters. So then going infinite with Familiar is not enough. You also need to be able to mill the opponent out with a Scavenger's Talent, for instance. But no symmetrical life gain effects in Explorer, at least. So a sack a token draw card. And pay the one. And we did find another familiar, so I don't think I can decline, even though I wouldn't mind an extra land. And our Gilded Goose also very good with the trail. Alright, so we have all the combo pieces we need, we just need to get them in play now, and hopefully not get them exiled. Igra, our opponent, is not going to be able to interact with a whole lot, so tapping out for Igra right now could be reasonable. And then next turn we have to figure out a way to sacrifice the familiar to get it in the graveyard. Or we can just go Gilded Goose, double familiar, and hopefully they don't have another Skyclave. And then next turn we can play Igra and combo off pretty easily. In case they have Skyclave, I think I go for Igra right now. And Gilded Goose can also be a way for us to sacrifice a familiar. Now a Righteous Valkyrie. At least it doesn't look like our opponent is threatening a lethal next turn. So, yeah, a few ways we can go about it. Play Familiar. So yeah, we cannot sacrifice it yet, because even though it's a food, it's also a creature, so it still has summoning sickness. But uh, yeah, if we get another Familiar in the graveyard, we're good to go. And then for now... Maybe just pass a turn and hope they don't exile the familiar in play. If we wanted to play it absolutely safe, maybe just hold both familiars in hand. Although then they could exile the goose and still prevent me from sacrificing the familiar in play. Right, Resplendent Angel we don't care about. Opponent's gonna gain a lot of life this turn, but not infinite life. And as long as they're not dealing lethal damage, we're okay. And also sack of food, pay the one to Trail of Crumbs. I guess technically we could mill another Cauldron Familiar to just win at instant speed here. So I'll pay the one, and a Witch's Oven will do. So yeah, opponent's gaining a lot of life, but next turn... Either with Gilded Goose or Witch's Oven, we can sank the Familiar to get it in the graveyard and then go infinite. But uh, I guess it's good to showcase this interaction. Can also pay the one if we'd like. So if we didn't have double Familiar already, we get a lot of looks at finding one. And this is just game. We'll see if our opponent makes us go through all the motions here. Maybe I should pay the one to try and find a scavenger's talents to speed things up. Although now I don't think we'll have the mana to level it up anyway, so... I guess if I'm tapped out, Trail of Crumbs is not gonna bother me anymore, but luckily our opponent sees that we have an infinite combo and scoops it up. Otherwise we would have been forced to sit here for quite a while. On to the next one.
Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a reasonable hand. Missing most of our combo pieces, but Supplier and Oven can dig pretty deep. Facing a Savai Trium. So this might be some sort of um, discover combo deck that wins the game around turn 4, turn 5. So could still go Supplier and then turn 2 Dispute as well. All right, this can be a Voice of a Resurgence instead. So maybe more of a Creature Sacrifice deck. So don't really want to dispute in the opponent's turn and give them an Elemental token. So I'm forced to act now. Could also go Scavenger's Talents plus a Witch's Oven. Yeah, that seems okay by me. Or even double Scavenger's Talents just to make more food tokens. And then pass. Don't need to chum block the voice right now. Can maybe still sacrifice supplier to oven or dispute. Now a fable. And another oven. So I would like to hit my land drop. So to that end playing Wayfinder makes sense instead of just playing dispute. Since this digs a little bit deeper. Meldigra. So that's good to know. And then I think Fatal pushing the Shaman token is fine for now. So now we just need to find Cauldron Familiar and level up one of our talents. Omnath, alright, so it's a four color value pile. Takes out Wayfinder, makes two food tokens. And another Fatal push isn't bad. So we probably want a Deadly Dispute to enable Revolt and then push Omnath. And I guess Deadly Dispute sacking a food token also works. And then play Oven versus level up Scavenger's Talents. I think for now play Oven and then next turn we'll level up. Leyline Binding hopefully going for Witch's Oven, since we've got a few more in hand. Perfect. No need to activate it right now. Take two from Voice of Resurgence. And a Neoform I see. So our opponent grabbing maybe a Risen Reef here, yep. The Elemental Value deck. So level up Scavenger's Talents can do it twice potentially, although then I'm not going to have enough things to sacrifice since only when a creature dies do we get the food tokens. But yeah, level up once. And then could level up again and then play an oven. And level up the other one. And this will mill me for four. Hopefully milling colder and familiar. Not yet. Can still sack the supplier, although can also do that in the opponent's turn to maybe chum block. And keep milling to find familiar. Now reflection plus risen reef is quite a combo. They can also activate on voice to make more leftover elementals. And they're once again going for Oven. This time I think I do want to sacrifice it now, or do I? Don't think I'm at a risk of dying. Meld another Igra and a Familiar. I could bring back Familiar, but can do that at any point to try and chum block. Don't want to run into another Leyline Binding. So our opponent's going off. 
Question is, can they stop me from comboing with another binding, for instance? I think I'll take it for now as opposed to jumping with Familiar, since we've already triggered Scavenger's Talent all the way. Okay, so step one, play Witch's Oven. I'll level up Scavenger's Talents. And then can bring back Familiar. And hope to mill another one. We did. Alright, so everything is in place to now combo with Igra. End of turn, sacrifice three food tokens. Bring back Igra. Get a bunch of triggers. Now I could start milling the opponent as well. Which might be a faster way to win the game as opposed to uh, and draining with damage. Get to see the opponent's deck as well. So we're still in the end step. Sack familiar to the familiar. Rinse and repeat. And there's not a whole lot our opponent can do about this. But now with double talent it's going to be a lot faster to actually win the game. In case our opponent doesn't concede, but they've seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have what looks like a keeper. Got a good mix of interaction, ways to mill ourselves, some card draw engines. Turn one. Could start with a witch's oven. I think I go with a supplier. And we already milled a familiar, that's nice. Turn 1 Supplier can set up a turn 2 Deadly Dispute. Meantime, our opponent with a Proving Ground. And no Companion, so this could be some sort of 4-5 color uh, Quintorius combo deck or Discover combo deck that tries to win in one turn around turn 4, turn 5 they can go off. So then it's going to be a pure race to whoever can combo first. So if that's the case, yeah, we're not doing a whole lot here. Can play Oven, Sack Supplier. Or we could play Trail of Crumbs and then next turn maybe look into paying the one after sacking a food. And yeah, we do see another tri -land. So our opponent off to a slow start. At least they don't have Leyline Binding available since they don't have white mana untapped. If I bring back Familiar, can attack for a little bit more damage, but... I'll just take my turn. So now attack with Supplier. Play the Oven. And then I could bring back Familiar now, in case we find a 1-drop we want to cast, like a Gilded Goose. Poseju could maybe be relevant. And then I can sack Familiar to the Witch's Oven, bring it back and pay the one again. It's going to be a Beanstalk, so yeah, our opponents, probably the Quintorius combo deck, and they could just win next turn. I think I let this resolve. If our opponent gets planes, they can still Leyline Binding. If I sack Familiar now, pay the one and bring it back, our opponent could exile the familiar, which we want to avoid, I think, although I guess there is Boseju as well, so I guess we'll let that happen. They may not get a planes after all. 
Ah, it's just a swamp. And we found Igra. Although we cannot cast it yet. And a scavenger's talent. So yeah, if our opponent has the combo next turn, we just lose. Is there anything we can do to interact here? Maybe Busage on a tri land. There's a chance our opponent doesn't have the right color to get. If we blow Perfine's Tower, but I imagine they have basic planes in there to still cast Quintorius. So yeah, it's not looking good. Can play Talents. Level it up once. And then, yeah, I can't even channel Boseju anymore. We would be in a decent position to combo next turn. If we mill another familiar, can just cast Igra and go off. But our opponent might have beaten us to the punch. All right, just a tap land instead. So no Quintorius this turn means we might have a chance. Although now they probably have some interaction available. So stick to the plan, which is often sack familiar. Now I could also consider sacking Stitcher Supplier. Uh, although we can also push one of our creatures if they try and take it out. So maybe we can kind of bait them into doing so. Although I would like to trigger Trail of Crumbs maybe. And then yeah, I guess there's still Boseju. Yeah, I think I have to spend my mana. Bring back Familiar, pay the one. Mill for two again. And don't need an extra land. So Trail of Crumbs it is. Now we could see them maybe Exile Familiar. Did actually mill another. So yeah, we technically have the combo next turn. But we'll have to wait and see if our opponent has a relevant interaction. I do not have Igra in the graveyard, otherwise leveling up the talent could be better than casting Igra in case they have a counter spell. But I say we go for it. Alright, they're resolved. So now they would have to very carefully time their removal to disrupt one of my pieces. So I think we're fine to just let the opponent untap, and then if they ever tap out, we combo off in response. Opponent channeling Tanuki, they could still have Leyline Binding. So let's say we sack Familiar to the other Familiar to bring it back, or opponent tries to Leyline Binding. There's no real window where they can interact meaningfully. Since a familiar sacrifices the other familiar, so there's no window where they can really exile anything since Igra has ward. And yeah, we do see the clever impersonator. Opponent did indeed have the leyline binding, but yeah. What are you gonna exile? Familiar, we just respond by sacking it. And our opponent explodes, get to both mill them and to drain them to death. So yeah, if our opponent had turn 5 Quintorius in this deck, for those that aren't aware, they would just uh, minus it, discover a clone effect like Clever Impersonator. There's a few others that can copy Planeswalkers, especially the one that removes the legendary type so they can have more than one in play. And then thanks to the passive from Quintorius, they get to just drain us to death with uh, two damage and gain two life every time by making additional copies of Quintorius and minusing it over and over. So their deck has to be built in such a way that they don't have any cards with mana value uh, four or less that isn't a clone effect. So we do see some three mana ramp to maybe combo on turn four and then Leyline Binding is their best interaction. But yeah, luckily for us, their fifth land came into play tapped and they couldn't quite get there before we did. So yeah, I'm quite impressed by this Igra combo deck. It's surprisingly easy to assemble the combo, 
because just milling the Cauldron Familiar is good enough. Milling Igra can also suffice if we have the Scavenger's Talent, and I think Scavenger's Talent is the real key to this deck that's almost tailor-made for this combo to exist. It kind of does everything we need it to, making replacement food tokens, milling us, and even bringing back Igra. So yeah, this deck is very powerful and might be one of the top contenders in Explorer and Pioneer going forward. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.